In this video I'm going to show how to put on a basic config for a Cisco switch. The model that I'm using is a layer 3 Cisco 3560 switch. Um, I will have other videos that will go over uh, settings such as NTP, DNS, and other common uh, switch commands uh, as well as other uh, things. Um, so the first thing we'll need to go over is what items you'll need. Uh, you'll need a rollover cable um, which uh, can be seen right here. Um, these come with the switch out of the box and uh, one end has a DB9 serial connector, the other end is an RJ45 connector. Um, if you're in a situation such as myself, my laptop does not have a serial uh, uh, port on it, uh, you'll also need uh, a, an adapter. Uh, the adapter I have is a serial DB9 to USB and then I just connect those two together uh, and make the connection uh, to my laptop. Uh, here's the picture for that. So as you can see here's the 3560 switch, power cord, uh, RJ45 connector, uh, then it connects to the serial to USB adapter and then into uh, the laptop. Uh, let's see the network topology for this. Um, looks like this. Basically we have our internet uh, and then we have a firewall and then we have an existing 2960 switch uh, in my case and we just ran out of ports so we need to add another switch. Well I'm adding a 3560 switch um, it's a little bit uh, overkill because it is a layer 3, whereas the one in front of it is layer 2. Um, it basically has more features. It can do uh, routing, um, which the 20, uh, 2960 can do some, but it's a lot more limited than the 3560. So basically, um, I'm just adding another switch to it. The 3560 will work fine for um, uh, the, these purposes. Uh, let's see, the next thing I'm going to go over is um, the different types of modes that you have, uh, but before I do that I'm actually going to launch uh, PuTTY, which is uh, software that you use to connect through um, either SSH, Telnet, or in our case, Serial. Um, since I plugged that USB adapter into my laptop, uh, my COM port is actually COM4, and I like to do logging just in case I ever want to go back to uh, see what was done. So I will put uh, 3560 switch dot log, and this will capture uh, everything that. Uh, um, I'll be doing. Okay, right now I'll hit enter and right away it wants to know if I want to enter the initial configuration dialog. Um, I always just choose no and then I get my first uh, prompt. Uh, notice how it has a greater than sign right after the host name uh, which is switch. Uh, this mode is known as user exec mode. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do in here. You can see certain things, uh, but whenever we make changes, we're pretty much going to do them in privileged exec mode. So in order to do that, I type in EN, short for enable, and now the uh, greater than sign changes to a pound sign. And now I can do uh, start to get into do a lot of the configurations that I need to do. Um, since it is acting like it is brand new out of the box, um, you can see that if I want to show the startup config, um, and I just hit tab to finish that command, uh, there's nothing there. Uh, there's nothing there because I haven't written anything to, con to the configuration yet. Um, but if I show the running config, you'll see an actual config there. And as you can see, there's all it sees all the ports and what's on there at this point. Um, if 
I don't save this config. When I reboot the switch, all changes will be lost, and I'll go back to asking me if I want to um, uh, start the configuration. So after you make all your changes, make sure that you save it, and then you should be able to reboot and not have any issues. So uh, that is the second uh, uh, mode. The next uh, mode that I'm going to go over is uh, um, global configuration mode. And in order to do that, I type in config or configure and then T for terminal. And now we're in global configuration mode. This is where um, we start making our changes. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is set the host name because as you can see right now, it's just set to switch which is a little boring, so uh, you can change it to something that's a little more specific to where you're at. Um, let's just say we're at the uh, headquarters site, and this is switch number two, as can be seen in the topology, so I'll call it HQ uh, switch two, two. And now that's our new host name, as you can see. Um, but there you can see interface VLAN 1 shows no IP address. We're going to change that right now. We're going to go back to our uh, topology. So I need to change to the interface VLAN. So to do that, I'll do INT VLAN 1. And now I uh, can make changes to, uh, to the VLAN. Uh, let's see, I will add IP address, and again I hit tab to finish the typing for me. Uh, IP address is 192.168.71.3, and I need to put the subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. Enter and that should cover it um, f for that. Um, I am going to show what the interface looks like right now. Since I am in global configuration mode, I have to type in the uh, command do first, and then I could do show interface VLAN 1. And you notice this time I didn't use a space after the N. It doesn't matter. It'll, it'll understand. And you can see VLAN 1 is up. And protocol is up, which is good. This means we're, the VLAN is ready to use. Um, after that, I am going to see if I can ping that now. Uh, ping 192.168. Uh, 72, oops, sorry, 71.3 and it's looking like it's slowing down like it might not work but there we go first packet was lost but uh, now the rest are fine so we can ping it now let's try to tell that to it 192.168.71.3 I already know right away this is not going to work because we have not configured our VTY lines so it's not going to work. It says password required but none set. So we will go back in there and do that. Um, I will do line VTY zero and I'm going to do 15. This way it will cons it'll cover zero and four and five through 15. And it'll just take care of all of them. 0 through 4 is more of a legacy uh, type of command. Uh, the newer ones um, will just do 0 and all the way through 15. This is the, as you can see I typed here, it stands for virtual teletype. Uh, allows connections uh, such as uh, Telnet and SSH. So I am going to go and set that up real quick. I am going to set a password of blah. And 
let's see if that allows us to telnet into it now. Wow, different, didn't give us a message this time. Uh, now it's asking for the password. So we'll put in blah, and we are now in user exec mode, but we want to get into uh, privilege mode. So we'll do an AN for enable. Well, no password set for that. So um, we will need to take care of that real quick. And that would be EN, short for enable. Uh, oh wait, that's why it's not working, because I'm in the VTY commands. And I just did a question mark to see what my commands are available to me. So I'm going to back up one level go to, by typing exit. And now I am going to type in enable. Let's see, enable secret. I'm going to choose zero because the password I'm, that's going to follow is not encrypted. And what that means is I'm typing it in clear text. If I had an encrypted hash, I would put that, I would put in a, with a five instead of a zero, and then I would type in the encrypted hash. But since I'm not doing that, I'm doing plain text. Uh, I'm just going to put uh, the password, enable PW, and that should do that. So now if we hit enable, it should allow us to put in the password for that. And that is enable PW. And now we're in. Um, uh, last thing I'm going to show is the service password encryption. Um, Basically, I will show you what that means. Again, since I'm in uh, global configuration mode, I have to type in do instead of just saying show, run. I have to do do show run, because global configuration mode won't know what show run is. Um, so now it's coming up. You notice when I did the enable secret password, it changed from a 0 to a 5. It encrypted it for me. So this is good. Um, this is the command I was telling you about, service password encryption. Currently it's set to no. The problem with that is, is when you get down to your um, VTY password, it's exposed in clear text. So if someone, if you have a printout of your config and someone sees that, they know what it is. So we don't want that to happen, so while I'm still in global configuration mode, I am going to type in the service password encryption and take care of that. So at this point I'm going to end and I'm going to do just a regular show well, that show run uh, because I got out of global configuration mode I got and I'm connected through a, a console cable it's showing me that message about uh, being configured uh, let's see what it looks like now. The command, uh, well, the word no is no longer there. And if you go further down to the end of the config, uh, our password is now encrypted, which is good. So at this point, I'm going to write the config. You can either do copy, uh, run, and then um, start. Yeah. And that's one way to do it. Um, another way is you can just do WR for write. So now if you do a show start, you have your config saved. And when you reboot, it'll come back up and it'll let you do what you need to do. And I am going to exit out of here. And that will be it. Uh, if you like this video, just please uh, like and subscribe. Thank you.